Welcome everybody to our webinar of the month. Today we are talking about podcasting for designers and I have two special guests on my co-host for designer discussions. This is who they are, Maria Martin and Miriam Lapuner. <laughs> All right, let me go first. Um, so my name is Miriam Lapuner. I am a PR consultant. Um, I've been doing PR for a very long time and I do a lot of work with brands in the home and design space. And I also um, have an online program where I help interior designers do their own PR. And I'm, I'm the PR um, expert of the three of us that host the Designer Discussions podcast. Hi, I'm Maria. I'm an interior designer. I've been doing residential design uh, for over 20 years. And um, my role on the podcast is really just to talk about um, how to manage your clients, how to understand their decision-making process and, and help them to get through the process with the best possible ways of communication out there. Um, it's just, you know, we all have a hard time adjusting to the new things. Um, and I like to just open people's eyes to new solutions and kind of keep people above board on what's happening new in the industry. Um, and I have a software program for drawing um, on the iPad. And I still practice as an interior designer. So everything that we talk about is something I try to use and see if it works or not before I talk about it. So that's, that's my role. So today we're going to talk about the topics of the importance of it. What are the fundamentals? And then we're going to talk about the top trends. And we actually have a guide for you at the end to help you as well if you are going to do this on your own. We, and we also have an option if you need help. So this has really been trending since the coronavirus of 2020. That's really when audio jumped because a lot of people were confined to their home. And so that's when podcasts grew. And so this is, and I've heard from a lot of designers and seen a few other designers that have begin their own podcast. And one of the impetus for that was the coronavirus and not being able to access people from either in person or walk-ins that they used to have. And so this was one of the outlets from it. Some of the important actors with a podcast is you have low costs compared to other marketing methods. This is one of the lowest costs to get your name out there, build your brand, do all those type of things. Once your end user, your audience really gets to know you by hearing your voice, it's actually easier for them to do business with you because they feel like you know you. And Maria talked about, so we're doing on our own podcast. What's the name of the Beha series? Behavioral Economics. Yeah, Behavioral Economics. So, yeah, so we're doing the series. Thank you. See, see this is why I have them here. <laughs> so, so we're doing a series on Behavioral Economics and Maria talks about one of them is when they hear you or they see you, they feel like they already know you. So this is a form of marketing that if you have a podcast that you can get out there and have your audience get to know you. And then once they actually talk to you, they feel like they already know you and it's easier to buy from you because it's all about the no like, and trust. In terms of consumption, podcasts are one of the easiest ways for you to consume a media. I listen to podcasts while I'm working out or while I'm driving or going from place to place. So it's easy to, uh, to consume. It's not like video where you have to see it, but you can just hear it. And it's just easier for you, to, for you to consume that type of media. Then it's a good way for you to build your niche. So Whatever area you're in, whether it's historical preservation, whether it's aging in place, whatever the niche is in design, it's easier for you to stand out and, and build that niche and have a podcast around it. OK, and you can reach a large audience because I know we have people that listen to us all the way in Pakistan. <laughs> you know, I didn't even know we had, I didn't know we had an audience out there, but we actually, every episode, we actually have people that listen to us in Pakistan. So hopefully we're offering them good information, but <laughs> well, we have to, if they keep listening, I would assume. So, <laughs> and then with all podcasts, you have to have a hosting platform, just like a website where you have a website host, you have to have a podcast host. There's a lot of them out there, but that is where your podcast lives on their hosting. And then you get access to an RSS feed that you can place on all the other premium services like Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, 
yada, yada, yada. And then it uses the RSS feed. So when a podcast goes live, it's automatically live on all the other hosts. This is a small list, small list. We use Buzzsprout. We actually use them because we were recommended to them. One of the mentors that we used to start our own podcast was Pat Flynn. And so that's who he uses and he recommended it. But there's dozens of them out there. So do your research, find the one that's right for you. In terms of the equipment, basically there are two things that you need at a minimum. And that's a good microphone and then a soundproof room of some sort. Or if you can have it where you can add in areas around you so you can control the sound, that helps out a lot. And I'm going to just let Maria talk about that because when we started our own podcast, there was an echo that I used to hear on my end. Now, I'm not using the microphone on this webinar, so you may hear a little bit of an echo now. But when we do our podcast, there was an echo sound. But Maria told me what she was doing, and I instituted that, and it helped out a lot. So if you could just tell us a little about what you did. So I went online and I bought uh, 24 by 48 acoustic panels. And so if you're sitting and you're facing your computer and you have your microphone in front of you, it, leaning up against my desk facing me, I wrapped myself in acoustic panels. And they basically look like bulletin boards or something that you would pin something to in an office. I just got white ones. And then when I'm not using them, I just set them aside um, in my office and it just helps keep the audio from bouncing off of something. Um, and then the microphone Jason will talk about really doesn't pick up stuff from any other direction except for straight in front. And so once you just kind of get a nice little bit of acoustic paneling around you, I do have hardwood floors. I have rugs and drapes in there. And that just wasn't enough. If you want to see the difference, <laughs> listen to episode one through about six of our podcast, Designer Discussions. And then after episode six, you'll see the difference in my own voice quality. Because <laughs> that was because I was hearing the echo in episode one through six and I was hearing from others, like, why do you sound echoey? And then that's when I had talked to Maria about it. And I did that on my own end and that helped me as well. So if you want to see the difference, just try it. And then in terms of the microphone, there's a lot of them out there. We actually have one that we recommend it. As I said at the end, there's a guide that we have that actually has the exact microphone that we use and you can use that one. Um, and then Miriam has it there too. It's, <laughs> and so, but there, there's a few of them that you can get, but I would say do not use your computer's audio or your, your computer mic because you're not going to get the same quad. Like I'm on the computer mic now and it's all right for a webinar, but for a podcast, that's not good. That's not good. So just invest in some type of microphone. You want to make sure to spend that extra money, get a quality microphone and somehow soundproof the area where you're in editing. So once you begin the podcast, you're, you are going to have to edit it somehow, somewhere. And there are a lot of free software out there. There's also some training and we have some access to that that I'll share at the end on that as well. But it's not that hard to use if you've ever done any type of editing on any type of software. It's, it's really simple. And really, it's just more about chopping out the areas that where you may have made a mistake. Because when you do any, any type of, whether it's video recording, audio recording, you're going to have a flow. It just, it just happens. I mean, we're human. We're, we're going to make flubs and mistakes. And so you want to edit all of that out. And so you want to have some type of way or editing software where you can do that. We also have here the noise canceling headphones. This is more so for you on the listening side. So you, you're not disturbed because I know sometimes when we're taping our own podcast, like I have kids at home sometimes. <laughs> so, to, so to be able to not listen to them and focus. Is important. It's important that we you'll hear on our own podcast, cats, dogs, uh, uh, moving stuff, moving vans, uh, trash can, pick up people. I mean, just everything. <laughs> and so even though even though the, the audience may not hear that when you're taping, that may that that may distract you. And so by having that in, by having the headphones on, it helps to keep you focused so you're not thrown off by everything happening on, on the outside. No, I think Maria was gesturing it. It's like, don't use wireless mm -hmm. headphones. 
Um, yeah. It's just, it's safer to have it all wired and plugged in. Yep. You're going to want like a windscreen on your mic so that you don't get like that staticky sound when you have um, air crossing the face of it. it. They even have these great little like pop covers that they call it. It's like a round flat disc that you can put over the top of it. So that if you're speaking, you don't get the smacks and the little mm -hmm. mouth sounds that naturally happen. And, and realistically, I did a ton of research since we started the podcast and, um, there are the professional level mics are like $300. Um, and the difference between the audio on the one that we recommend and the highest and most expensive one you can get at about 300 bucks that will do like an excellent job is that it actually, this one will pick up less outside sound and considering our lives it's just better less outside sound <laughs> especially now especially now <laughs> since a lot more people are working at home right now so yes have some trends here that you need to watch out for if you are to start a podcast and and we're, we're going to start with the theme so it all starts with what is the purpose of the podcast what's the theme who, who is your audience? Who are you uh, doing a podcast for? So for our own selves, we're doing our podcast around uh, designers, you know, interior designers, home remodelers. And then we're talking about marketing, PR, business development to that audience. And so that's our theme and all of the topics and all of the podcast episodes we have are around that theme. And so that's what you want to decide first. And you want to ask yourself all these questions just to understand really what is the purpose? Okay. And then as we all know, and I've, I've heard the saying, I forgot who said this, is that if you uh, fail to plan, you're actually planning to fail. So uh, by having some type of plan in action, that helps you to get your podcast off to a good start. Next is the format. When we at first talked about doing our own podcast, we, we were talking about, okay, so are we going to have guests on? Is it going to be mainly us? Uh, are we going to, what we're going to do? And so you, you want to decide that. So there are pros and cons to each way. So what we went with is, you know, so we have, it's, you know, the three of us. And it helps us out because we all have very busy lives. So we all have our own businesses. And so it's easy. So we're able to split up the workload. So where we don't have to, not one of us has to decide on what the topic is. Miriam really you know, she could talk about the PR, which I have no interest in. And so, and she, she could really talk about that area. And, and <laughs> I wanted to get Maria. You didn't and she, just say that. <laughs> I wanted to get Maria. If, if you watch, so on our, on our own podcast, we actually do video just like we, just like we have here. If you look at the YouTube and one of the reasons I'm not going to say I don't have interest in PR. I, I did that to get a rise out of it. Now you do. Since you've <laughs> yeah, do known me, you're but very interested in PR. I had, I had actually did that to get a, you know, a rise out of Maria. If you watch any of the YouTube, if you watch the video portion of the podcast, all of our podcasts you can find on YouTube, you'll see Maria a lot of the time that we're talking. She's making gestures in the background, faces try to make us laugh. She's dancing in the background. And it's just, it's, it's, it's fun. You know, I mean, it's interesting. And so we, we actually have a lot of fun. And so it, it just keeps us up beat. And we take on Monday mornings and it helps us to always have something to look forward to. And it helps, honestly, it helps me to get my week off to a good start. And so a, a lot of times you may hear me say something. It's just to see what, Maria's reaction will be what what kind of face she's going to make if she's going to laugh or you know do a jest or something like that. <laughs> back to this but the main thing at the end of the day you want to make sure to tell a story because when we talked about the audience and what the theme is at the end of the day you want to uh whoever your audience is or or whoever you're trying to make the podcast for you want to Make sure to tell a story that's interesting to your audience and you know, or hopefully you will find out what's the best way to do that. Whether that's on your own, having guests, co-hosts, or whatever that is. Leveraging your network. For most designers, they already have a built-in network. Whether that be other designers, manufacturers, consultants that you work with, clients, past clients, family members, whatever that may be. 
So with your network, you want to use your network in a couple ways. One way is your network could be a part of the guest that you want to have on the podcast. So you can, so you automatically have, so if you don't have content that you already know what you want to talk about or whatever, whatever your theme is, hopefully you may, I would assume that you already have in your network, somebody in your network that can talk about that topic that you can have on to talk about whatever it is, use your network for marketing. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that in a second, but you can also use them for marketing your podcast as well for Social media, you can use your network to get out your episodes to their audience that are that may be interested in what you have to say. So your network can help you really jumpstart the podcast in the right manner. No, I think it's very helpful for us, though, that um, because the three of us, we have separate businesses and we each have connections. And so it really allows us to tap into a large pool a large network. So when we're brainstorming content, I don't think it's ever happened that we've, you know, it's like we never come up short. We always have between everything that we know and can talk about and all the people that we have in our networks, there's there's a lot of options. So I think that's a big advantage. And I was just, and then this may not be the right place to put it in this webinar, but just keep in mind if you're putting together like blog posts, that is a podcast episode. Whatever it is that you're talking to your audience on your website about, that is the podcast episode. And so you'll also use the same SEO and terminology. So when you start looking at how you're going to put together the format of your podcast, how you're going to um, work on making sure you find new people who are going to come and find your, um, po your podcast the same people who would find your blog as well. They're searching the internet for that information. Yep, yep. And we're going to talk a little bit about that on assets, but just to jump back to the network part. So we just had Harry Kelly. So I've seen her numerous times. Miriam knew her and worked with her in the past. And so she was able to have her on our podcast where, and I wanted to have her on my podcast and I didn't have Miriam. I would have had to reach out to her people. It would have been a whole Okay, I have to talk to your people. I talk to my people. I don't really know you. What are you trying to do? Are you like, what is this for? It would have been a, it would have been a whole ordeal. But since Miriam knew her, she was able to get her on. Now she knows me. And if I was to ask her now, she'll be okay. But it's all about the network and utilizing your network because you may have access to people that others do not have. And then, you know, or you may, or even if you have your own network, you may have somebody in your network that knows the person that you want to have on your podcast and you can go through them or have them ask. So, you know, your network, like I said, your network is an aspect of your network. Make sure to utilize your network. Okay. Now, this is the part Maria was just talking about, the creative assets. So this is like having all of, of the blog posts and all that. We're going to talk about that in just a minute. But in terms of the creative assets, you want to start with your name. So making sure that what the theme is, the name also ties into that, because uh, this is a, a part of SEO also is how your podcast is found on the thousands of podcasts out there. If you type in whatever it is, say you do historical preservation and you say your podcast is the history of architecture podcast. So having the, the name pertain to what the theme is, it's easier for others to find you and then learn more about what your podcast is all about. You also have the website. Most of the hosts that we talked about earlier have an option for you to have a free website. I would say that's great. <laughs> that's nice. But I would say to create your own website because you have more control over how it operates and how you get the episodes out there and uh, how people contact you. you. You just have more control that way. So I would say having a website with the host, utilize it because that's just another avenue that they can find you. So I'm not saying don't use it, use it, but just create your own. And with that, you want to have blogs. And so that's what Maria talked about, having the blogs and the SEO power of it with, the, uh, with each of the episodes where they can find you. So making sure that you have your own website where you can promote 
it your own way. Your audience can contact you through the website, and there's a number of things that you can do as long as you have your own website. So make sure you have that. Yeah, I was just going to say, I would go back and look at your previous blog work because most design kitchen and bath uh, businesses already have an existing blog, right? Mm -hmm. They're already putting out at least 12 pieces of content a year. They can look back at their last like couple of years and see what their most popular topics are, the ones that they can add on to. And that's where I would start with what your content is going to be. Because if people are interested in hearing about it from you, if they're searching for it on the internet, then that's a viable podcast. Mm -hmm. Now, promotion, podcast promotion, this is important. And so this is where, where we had talked about earlier with your network. This is where your network can help you as well. But making sure that you get the word out. Just because you have a podcast, this is not if you, this is not like in Field of Dreams. Build it and they will come. Not true. <laughs> not, not true for podcasts or, or honestly almost anything in the digital world. <laughs> whatever it is, whatever you build for them to come, you have to promote it and market. And so there, there's a few options here. So SEO, even if you do not have a website, you can SEO the actual podcast episodes because in each of the episodes, you can have the descriptions, you can have keywords. So making sure each of the keywords, the descriptions have the words that you want to be found with pertaining to that particular topic. You should have some type of newsletter. Now, this is something that when we launched our podcast, we didn't have a newsletter for the first about 25 episodes. So we, we just started the newsletter this year. So we had just started the newsletter. You want to make sure to submit to all the podcast directories that are out there. This is honestly of everything that you do. This is going to be the most labor intensive. Because right when you start, you got to submit that RSS feed to every podcast one. And Apple Podcasts, honestly, was the worst. <laughs> it was so many hoops you had, we had to jump through to get it. Then we had to have the image a certain way. All the others were okay. You just have an image at this size. But we had to have so many pixels in the image, this certain size. And then it was sent back a couple of times. And then the description changed this and that. Honestly, I say do Apple Podcasts first. And once you do that submission, all the others will be, if you use that same format, all the others will be. Easy. But submitting, making sure to submit to all of the podcasts. I know I'm asked every time I say I have a podcast, they say, oh, where can I find you? I'm like any of the podcast platforms, iHeartRadio, Spotify, Google, all of them. So you want to make sure you're on all of them because you never know how the end user or your audience will find you. And so you want to make sure you're everywhere your end user can find you. When you publish episodes, so this is in the analytics. And we actually have a little bit on this too, but make sure to look at the analytics. Who's ever hosting your podcast, they're going to say how, when they're looking at your episodes, uh, what time of day. And so that just gives you information for future podcasts when you should have them uh, submitted to go live. And so look at that. You want to engage your listeners. So ask questions, have them comment right back to you so you can hear if what you're talking about is actually resonating with them or if you need to change it up a little bit. You want to appear on other podcasts. So I know within this last year, in the last few months, I've been on four other podcasts. And the whole purpose was for me to say what I had in my own business, but to also promote our podcasts. A lot of the times when you're on other podcasts, it's listeners that may not have ever heard of you. And it's an audience that may not know you. And it, it may be in a totally different industry as well. But you may say something on their podcast that resonates with them. And they may look and say, OK, well, let me listen to a few of their podcasts to see if I like it. And they may not even know our audience is a designers, home remodelers and architects. I know I've heard from others outside the industry that say, well, I've received value from your podcast on this episode and I'm not even a designer. So you just never know, even though your audience is who your audience is, you may have people on the outside that may want to listen. Yeah, I actually, I just want to sort of make a, a comment about the, and I should have probably said this when we were talking about 
the podcast format versus audio, but really a podcast is a form of media. So if you become a podcaster, it's like you're, you're sort of a citizen journalist, you know, and we notice this too, and our podcast is, is not super big yet, right? But we already get pitches from people who want to be guests um, on our podcast. And that's, you know, so it's one way of marketing it is like by collaborating with these other podcasts. But if you think about what a podcast is, it's like there's, you know, there's magazines, um, there's websites, you know, there's TV, there's radio. And then in the world of PR, podcasts are by now already their own media category and there's people out there there's businesses out there agencies out there whose sole purpose it is to pitch podcasts so and this just to say i mean it really is a big deal um and and how you market is is definitely key to uh, to your success Next, we're going to talk about metrics. So we we talked just a little bit about this, about when to actually post your podcast, but your whatever host you you use, they they will have some type of metrics. And you can also use the, the site PodKite, and that will hand you ads on your particular podcast because you can register your podcast with PodKite, and then they will let you know listeners and when they listen, how often, whatever. So that, that just hands you information that you need to know to enhance your podcast. And so you want to look at the, the subscriber count. Don't look at this every day. This is this just like SEO. <laughs> this mess changes. So, what, so you may have downloads or whatever where you had good week and you may have a down week. That just may be a, you just may have had an episode that you're listeners were not interested in. So, I mean, just so, you know, so don't, don't, don't take that to heart, you know? So just, just look at it overall, as opposed to each individual episode, but uh, getting that engagement helps for you to hear from your audience to see what they like and what they don't like. The stats are just an overall view, an overall look to see what may or may not be working, but you want to take that information to your audience and verify. So don't just go off the stats and say, oh, man, I got to change this because they're not listening to this. Uh, well, it may be something underlining why they didn't listen to it. So just use the stats overall, but then take that to your audience and verify and see, OK, what to learn, what the stats mean by actually talking to your audience. Monetizing your podcast. Now, this area here, we are in the process of doing that now ourselves. So by no means are we an expert in this, <laughs> but, but, uh, but this, this is something that most podcasters, once they've been podcasting for a while, want to say, okay, now I'm, I've, I've spent enough time. Now, how can I make some money off the time I'm spending producing these podcasts? And so these are just a few avenues. You have sponsorships, you have affiliate marketing, you have, uh, you have Patreon, where you sell other people's stuff or, or your own stuff when, and, and just like shirts or hats, something like that. So um, these are just a, a few ways that, that you can monetize a podcast. Obviously, if you have a business, you could promote your own business uh, through your podcast. With you know affiliate marketing, there are, you may have guests on your podcast that may be offering something. And then by having your listeners listening, go to their website and sign up for whatever that widget or service is, you can get a percent of that because you drew people to that widget or that service. So that's a way for you to make some money as well. So th those are just a few. And we have a sheet on the next slide that we'll let you have access to that get into some more. All right. And then this is the podcast cheat sheet. So this is a cheat sheet that gives step by step on what you need to do to get started with your podcast. And we got a lot of this information from Pat Flynn. And like I said, he was our mentor that helped us out to get our podcast off the ground. Great course. He has a great course and he's been doing podcasts for over 10 years, has over at the at the time when we did it, he had over half half a billion. Now he's actually closer to about eight hundred million downloads. 
Jones. So we learn from a guru that actually knows what he's talking about. So if you want to have access to that course, it's actually in this cheat sheet. But it's a lot of information in there. It's a step-by-step course that shows you what you need to do, how you need to set it up, how you need to name, how you need to edit. He goes, if you're going to edit it yourself, how you need to edit it, how you need to market it and promote it how you need to go to the next level of monetizing it. And he also has ongoing coach, which to be honest, we haven't utilized like we should, but but he has that as well. So this is a sheet and you can get there through that URL there, designerdiscussions.com forward slash podcast cheat sheet. And that's, that's how you get to that. I just want to say that that course was so super helpful because when we started, well, we we had a very ambitious timeline and I don't even remember, but it was like two months mm-hmm. when we first started talking about it. And I said, okay, now we're going to go live whenever it was. And it was a little bit insane <laughs> um, <laughs> because it, it, it takes quite a bit of work to Mm -hmm. get it all set up. And I know we were all simultaneously going through that course, which I think it would have been so much more difficult if we hadn't had that as a, as a guideline, because it really is step by step. And it helped me understand so many things on the back end that I just didn't have a clue about. So I think getting some kind of coaching or a course like this one is is a great idea if you're seriously considering starting a podcast. I'd say one of the big things that was a takeaway from taking it was that he recommended having a certain amount of episodes recorded before you launch your first episode, because on average, you're going to get frustrated that you've published seven or eight episodes and you aren't getting people really like you're not going to see instantaneous growth that's going to be super rewarding right off the bat. And so he's like, just go ahead and put enough content out there. And it's the same idea. Like when we teach about TikTok or short format video, cast a wider net plan to have 15 or 20 of whatever it is that you're going to put out there because you want as many people as possible to find you. And not everyone is looking for only one thing. And so you want to cast that big net. The The second thing I think is super important that we didn't talk about that we all know is really important is that we started it off on Clubhouse and we were already doing this once a week. We were doing it live. We were spending an hour. We were building an audience of people asking us questions. We were learning how to answer those questions as a team and finding out that it was beneficial for people along the way. And that was super rewarding for us. It was way more rewarding in the clubhouse than it was once we started publishing episodes because you don't get immediate feedback, you don't get to answer the immediate questions, and you don't have people who you're independently impacting their lives, coming back at you and saying, gosh, guys, you know what I did? I applied what you asked and it was really good. So we We did invest, I don't know how many months, Jason can probably tell us exactly how many months we spent doing doing our Clubhouse episodes, but we did not give up that let's meet once a week and do this. Um, We knew that once we killed the momentum of recording regularly and seeing each other and having to, you know, buckle down and put together the content before the next recording session, that if we gave that part up, momentum up which I believe the momentum, even in our design appointments, if you put up, if you give away the momentum, you can also lose that consistency that, um, that I feel like is probably one of our greatest assets. Um, and I think probably one of the hardest ones to come by. And I think that that is so important. And I think it came from the team. It didn't come from independent internal motivation. So, and it also came from the audience telling us about positive feedback. And so I just want to talk about those two assets that we have that we learned about through experience and we understand how valuable they are and that they are missing sometimes in the podcasting environment and that uh, we want other people to try to leverage alternative solutions to try to maintain those two things. What we learned honestly is consistency is key. And there was a stat that I had learned that blew me away is that 
Of the two million podcasts, ninety percent of the two million stop after three episodes, and then of that one hundred and eighty thousand, ninety percent of them stop after episode twenty. We actually had this on one of our episodes. Is like if you get to episode twenty one, you're in the top ten percent of podcasts in the world, and it's just and it's not it's not rocket science. It's it's just really consistency. Everybody listening to this knows that that actually true for almost anything that you do in life. It's all about consistency. And with, with podcasting, it's the same as long as you're consistent, you will see some form of success. I also wanted to mention if anybody needs help on their podcast, we are developing a way to help designers that done for you system in terms of editing and all of that, where all you just do is record and then hand it to us and we do everything else. If that is of interest to you, let us know. Just reach out to us if if any of that is interesting to you. I'm going to let Miriam and Maria say how you can get in contact with him if you want to reach out to any of them. Okay. Um, Of course, you can find all of our information um, or find us on the designer discussions um, website or on our social media. I also have my own website. It's called getinkdiy.com. And you can find me under the same name um, on social media. You can email me directly under Miriam at Get Ink DIY. So many different ways um, to find us. But I'd say if you can find one of us, you can usually find the other two very quickly. And I'm on designappy.com. And I'm also designappy on social media platforms, TikTok, um, Instagram. Um, I have a iPad sketch to scale, kind of like if AutoCAD, Photoshop, and uh, spreadsheets all made a baby and made something quick and easy for designers to work with. That's, that's what I do. Um, and I, and so you can find me through design appy. That's, that's where I show up most of the time. And um, I'd love to hear from you. We um, are super excited actually that we pushed through and did the podcast. And I want to let everybody on here know that the honest truth is Miriam and I told Jason, no, we would not do the podcast more than once. <laughs> <laughs> that yeah, that's true. And we're glad we did it. Yeah, that, that is true. I, I I had to convince them to do that. I had to convince them, but but it has turned out it has worked out for us. So that is good. It was and, the best idea you ever had, Jason. Seriously, yeah. Okay. It was okay. the best idea. It, the social media is becoming harder and harder to grow within, yeah. and so having our own platform that we can be found on it has been great. And. Honestly, Miriam and I have been able to do this because Jason took care of the editing and publishing mm-hmm. of the podcast. Neither one of us touched that side of the um, of the podcast. We just show up with content and people to talk to. And um, he's been helping us this whole time. So we love Jason for all of this. Mm-hmm. Appreciate that. And I, I didn't even pay y'all for that. But you <laughs> did say something about social media, which alludes to next month's webinar, where we'll be talking about Instagram marketing tips for design and remodeling companies at work. We're going to end it here. We hope to see you all here next month.